Hello, I'm Heidi Brandreiter. I'm a botanist with the Kentucky Nature Preserve, as well as Vice President of the Kentucky Native Plant Society. I'm here today as part of the Wildflower Week event with Kentucky Native Plant Society. I'm going to give you a guided hike along the trails of Lily Mountain Nature Preserve. And we are here in Astell County today in the Knobs region of Kentucky. And you can see behind me, the Knobs are characterized by these conical shaped hills. And we are gonna see habitats varying from dry ridge tops to some of more music creekside stuff. So hope you enjoy this. Hey everybody, this is Vanessa. I'm a botanist with Kentucky Nature Preserves and I'm out here at Lily Mountain with Heidi today to see what's blooming. I am a huge fan of violets, so I'm especially excited to see how many different violet species we encounter today. And I'll talk about some key features for each species as well as how to tell some of the similar ones apart. This is Viola sororia, the common blue violet. This is really the standard model of violets. This is pretty much what most people think of when they hear the word violet. It's also the state flower of five or six different US states. Um, it is a stemless violet, so all of the leaves and the flowers arise from the same point in the ground right there. The leaves are heart-shaped. They can be hairless or hairy. It's a pretty variable species. Um, it's common in lawns. It's common in woodlands. It's pretty much all around. It's probably present in every county in Kentucky. Here we have Viola subsinueta. This violet is superficially similar to Viola palmata, but this is what we would call a homophilus leaved violet, whereas Viola palmata is heterophilus because it starts out with heart shaped leaves and then becomes lobed over time. Viola subsinueta actually starts out with lobed leaves. We are on the top of Lily Mountain and have a lovely surprise of having the columbine in bloom, Aquilegia canadensis. And you see it has these beautiful two-toned flowers with the reddish maroon and yellow. And it likes growing on these uh, dry open rock outcrops. Here on the top of Lily Mountain is this beautiful red bud, fully in bloom. Lovely springtime flowering tree here in Kentucky. Another flowering shrub on top of Lily Mountain. This is Rus aromatica or fragrant sumac. The flowers are just starting to bloom and the leaves are just starting to come out. We are here at this beautiful shale glade along the trail. That is an open habitat with open rockiness. And there are two beautiful species in bloom. We have this moss phlox, phlox subulata, with the cleft petals, nice pink shade, and then the darker shade in the middle. And then we also have this bird's foot violet, Viola pedata, with the deep purple and the light purple. There's also some yellow potentilla in bloom, and some multi-flowered pussy toes. And the glade is edged with some pine trees. Here we are at a large patch of what is undoubtedly our showiest native violet. This is bird's foot violet, Viola pedata. And here we've got two varieties. Um, one is the solid colored form, and the other is kind of a bicolored form that it looks like a bit like a cultivated pansy. Um, the leaves are finely divided, like a bird's foot. And this yellow beauty growing right in the middle of the trail is called Hypoxis hirsutus, also known as Eastern Stargrass. It's very common, can grow in a variety of dry to music habitats. Here's a really nice population of Perfoliate bellwort, Eularia perfoliata. And you can see here, it has a, a, a yellow flower that hangs down. And this is as much as it opens up. It's not quite as showy as some plants. Um, 
There are two uvularias common in Kentucky. The way to tell them apart is that this one has hairless undersides to the leaf, and then uvularia grandiflora has uh, tiny little hairs on the underside of the leaf. That's how you tell them apart. Here is Solomon's seal, also known as Polygonatum biflorum. It's not quite open yet, but you can see in the axles of the leaves, there's two little dangling flower buds. Here we have a flowering tree, which is a uh, flowering dogwood, Cornus florida. And you, the interesting thing about this plant is that you can see here the flowers, what looks like the petals are actually white bracts and the flowers are these little green things here in the middle. This is Viola palmata, the palmate leaf violet. It's similar to common blue violet. It's stemless, so the leaves and the flowers come from the same point in the ground. But unlike the usual blue violet, um, which always has heart-shaped leaves, the leaves of palmate violet become divided. Um, and each successive leaf becoming more divided. So usually they start out like this, heart-shaped, uh, get a little bit more divided, a little bit more divided, and then later in the summer they'll be quite lobed. Very cool. Um, it likes dry woods. And um, you might mistake it for a regular blue violet, but just check out the leaves. It's real cool. You see, these here are actually a wild orchid. This is Cyperpedia macaulay, or the pink lady slipper, and you'll find it in these dry, acidic sites. And right now we are in the knobs of Kentucky, so common. And they're just starting. And you can see they're very fuzzy. Here is another native orchid. This is called rattlesnake plantain, or Goodyear pubescens. It's not a spring wildflower, but I just think the foliage is so beautiful that it's worth mentioning. This will bloom sometime in um, midsummer. Here is violet wood sorrel, Oxalis violaceae, and it's one of the, in my opinion, prettier of the Oxalis species. Um, the leaves have this pretty green shine to the top and then on the underside are actually purple if I can get one to show you there and the neat thing about this genus oxalis is that it's named after the fact that these plants actually have oxalic acid in them which is what makes them such a tasty treat if you are along the trail and need something tangy to munch on This is early meadow rue, Thalictrum diocum, and you can see it has very dainty little flowers with those stamens hanging down. And it is growing here on the edge of this little moist creek, which is a common habitat for it. And growing alongside it, we have Viola rostratum. We also have a nice cluster of Iris crustata, dwarf crested iris. Um, which I'm only seeing buds, but maybe in another week or so, this will be nicely in bloom. Here we have Viola rostrata. This is the long spurred violet. It is lavender hued with a dark purple center. And the most interesting feature of this guy are these long spurs on the lower petal. And that is what its Latin name means, rostrata. It's a beak-like projection. Uh, these are one of the stemmed violets, so instead of all of the flowers and leaves coming from the same point at the base of the plant, it sends up multiple stems and it has alternating leaves and flowers coming off the stems. And this is just a super, super cute violet. Here is a spring beauty in the Portulacaceae family, Claytonia virginica. And you can see these petals, they can vary from white to pink and have these pretty pink stripes throughout them. They're often found on the forest floors as well as in lawns. And you can see we are in a floodplain of this creek here and they're everywhere. So here is a neat little plant. 
It is a fern called Southern Adder's Tongue, also known as Ophioglossum pycnostecum. And the neat thing about this is that it has a sterile blade and a fertile stalk called a sporophyte, so much like other ferns. And you can see them usually in little clusters. We can see here there's about maybe five or six growing in this cluster. And we are still in the floodplain of this little creek. Here we have ragweed, which is Pecra albaveda. And you can see it has these beautiful yellow flowering heads. And then the leaves along the stem can be very dissected, whereas the basil leaves kind of have this roundish tapering down to the petiole. And oftentimes, if you look at the under the side of the leaf, of the basil leaves, they're purple. So here we have May Apple. It's a very iconic spring wildflower here in Kentucky. Um, you can see when it has these two leaves like this, that right in the middle is where the bud of the flower will be, which maybe in another week will be in flower. And a neat thing about this plant is that it's clonal. So if you look behind me, there's just a large patch all of May Apple all around me. Here we have uh, single-headed pussy toes also known as Antenaria solitaria, here at the base of this tree. It's a spring ephemeral that will come out um, March and April, and it likes these shaded music slopes. Um, my favorite thing about this plant is if you look at the underside of the leaf, it is as soft as petting a cat, hence the name Pussy Toes. Um, and then right next to it, we have our native chickweed, starry chickweed. Um, Stellaria pubera. And if you look closely, the neat thing about this plant is where it looks like it has eight petals, it's actually just four petals that are split down the middle. So. Here we have a nice cluster of three common spring ephemerals. The first one, which is very common, spring, uh, I'm sorry, Rue anemone, uh, Thalictrum thalictroides. We have slender toothwort, which is Cardamony angustata, which it's helpful to know that angustata means slender, so that would be an easy way to remember this one. The basal leaves of Cardamony angustata have very large leaves compared to their crawline leaves or their stem leaves, which are much slender. That's a good way to find this one. And then the last one here is Houstonia cerulea, or common bluets, also known as Quaker ladies. This is one of my favorite spring ephemerals, um, as it has this beautiful blue color contrasted by that yellow center. And this one you can find commonly in these nice mossy patches along trail sides. And it also grows commonly in people's yards. Here's another nicer example of the slender leaved cardamony toothwort. Um, you can see it has the very slender leaves along the stem, and then it has the thicker, fatter leaves at the base that can have the purple sometimes <laughs> underside. Here's a nice little cluster of toad shade, which is a species of trillium, sessile trillium, trillium sessile. Um, it has the three leaves, three sepals, three petals, and the petals are typically marooned. And then, um, unfortunately, this little cluster is also being choked out by Japanese honeysuckle, which is a very invasive vine that you can see crawling all around here. But it still seems to be hanging on just fine. This is a native but somewhat weedy violet species called Viola bicolor. The common name is American Field Pansy. This is, it's usually got light purple flowers with white and yellow centers. Some of the flowers are almost all white. It has small spoon-shaped leaves and very large foliaceous stipules. And here you can see that the stipules are kind of cleft and they're wrapped around the stem. It's a very cute little violet. Um, it's common and you can find it in relatively weedy places like pastures or on the trails.
Thank you for joining me today for our hike at Lily 